Yes, Steve. Hi. Hello. I'm very excited to be here today uh, with you, given that uh, destiny is now part of my vocabulary after uh, watching, a, you know, 50 Ramesh YouTube videos and uh, probably 20 of yours halfway through uh, enlightenment is not what you think. Um, reading segments of Ramesh's books and and uh, Ramana's publishings and uh, Masargadatta's publishings. And actually, I discovered you last in the sequence and have found. Well, I came last know, in the sequence. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And just um, finding the first 80 pages of Enlightenment is not what you think. I would say I was thunderstruck. Just go, wow, this is uh, basically what I've sensed this whole body, mind's life. Always thinking to myself, things are not as they seem. So what I'd like to do is is... I wrote down what my current understanding is. And I was wondering if I could put it in the chat and have you basically confirm your opinion whether I whether I actually have a basic understanding. Because one thing that is somehow comical and ironic is, you know, in watching particularly the talks, I believe they were in Germany with Ramesh where you know, you're know you sitting on the right side. The questions are funny because after a while, it's very clear that all the questions and questioners are asking from the viewpoint of I. All the questions. I didn't hear, maybe, maybe there were, but I wasn't aware that any of the questions were other than the view from the viewpoint of an I doer. And that had a profound effect on me. I go, oh, where I almost had an experience that like Western, particularly US people, you know, might consider like I, I had almost a what might be referred to as a schizophrenic experience where I'm looking like something's looking at the eye. <laughs> and I think that that thing that's looking at the eye is just also the eye, you know, kind of like, you know, it's kind of tricky. So anyway, very I don't. Tricky. Very, very tricky. Yeah. Steve. Very tricky. So, <laughs> Let, let me just paste this. Uh, okay. See what you what you've got there. It's not too long, I don't think. Let me see. I can then read it out, and uh, the translator can uh, trans. You know, it would be even preferable if you read it. That way, okay. Uh, the translator uh, today we're being translated in Russian, and she can. Uh, translate for the Russian speaking audience. Okay, that'll be fine. Okay. I'll, I'll do that. Right. All right. So, my question was or is do I understand the teaching of Ramesh and Wayne? Here is a summary of my understanding. The ego's viewpoint that it is a doer and as such is the cause slash creator 
of manifestation belies the truth, which is that the unmanifest is the source of the manifest. So God, consciousness, the absolute, the source, it's unmanifest, and it's the source of the manifest, the body, mind, organism, the world as we know it. So the ego is a manifestation of the unmanifest, the manifestation of source. The manifest cannot manifest the unmanifest. In other words, objects cannot manifest consciousness. So I was thinking of like contemporary examples of life as AI, you know, uh, is analogous to the ego. Artificial intelligence is analogous to the ego. AI's purpose is to be or manifest consciousness when in fact it's a manifestation of consciousness. So that's one portion of my understanding. Additionally, uh, devoid of self-realization, the which I which I understand to be the elimination of a sense of personal worship. So devoid of self-realization, the ego will create an unhappy reality and experience for the body-mind organism by making the happenings of life and, uh, and of manifestation unacceptable. I cannot be a witness of the manifestation if I think and believe I am the source of manifestation. Without realization of self, the witness is not being aware of its non-duality and hence will suffer the reality of the ego. Almost done. Suffering is the outcome of resisting that which is. For the body-mind organism, the source of the resistance is the ego. And then just a couple of thoughts. Conditioning can change only if it is the will of God. Decisions occur, and I doesn't make them. The future is not determined by a doer. Body-mind organisms do not create the future. So I would say that that is, in a short form, a basic statement of my current understanding. And I don't really want to proceed assuming that's accurate. Right. If it is not, you know, basically accurate. If there's anything that you can pick out from where you just go, yeah. because Ramesh, you know, that look he gets on his face when some when somebody is like, you know, misinterpreted his loving intention to to go hey this is this is my concept right. so any comment well, you can make on any okay. absolutely you've certainly grasped the concepts the 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 basic pointers of the teaching uh are those absolutely and there, that kind of uh, conceptual or intellectual understanding is a uh, potentially a very useful uh, stepping stone to a deeper kind of intuitive understanding that of what those pointers are pointing to. Right. And so. Uh, Ultimately, even that those uh, intellectual uh, that intellectual understanding must be transcended, not discarded or eliminated, but transcended as primary. Yes, and, and it's clear to me that has not occurred yet. <laughs> okay, well that is That's the process. Clear. That is the process we're engaged in. Had that happened, 
we probably wouldn't need to have this conversation. Right. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not. So the, the fact that this is ongoing and the, the seeking is still happening in that in that way means that this interaction between yourself and myself uh, is fueled. It's happening. Yes. <laughs> so what I can say is that uh, the ultimate value is in the seeing, in the recognition. The uh, conceptual understanding is simply a stepping stone. I, I believe I understand that. I mean, I, one thing that I, that I didn't write and hence didn't read is that using the phrasing God's will, I mean, self-realization will occur if and when that's God's will. So, so in that, a applies, sense, to, that applies to everything, Steve. <laughs> right. right. So it's not like I'm going to do anything as Steve that's going to result in self-realization. Right. Yeah. Well, this is where it gets very interesting because, and it is why I, you know, changed the language from Ramesh's language to my language that from doing to authoring. Right, FSA, right, uh-huh. Well, the author. So when Ramesh spoke of doing, he was talking about the sense that I am the author of the doing. The, the Steve's doing is part of what is happening. So we can say that Steve may well need to do various things in order for a deeper recognition to occur. But he will not be the author of that doing. Ah. Uh, so, all right, so, all right, so there is a confusion between two understandings. One is that I, in this current state, I'm not in charge of the outcome. Let's just, you know, as an arbitrary, just say the next 10 years of happenings in this life are not going to be based on the volition of Steve. Well, the, the fundamental question is, does Steve have volition? Right, yeah, I agree. All right, so that's even a high, no doubt. That is, you know, and intellectually, because I saw, particularly in those videos, in Germany, people struggling with even accepting intellectually the idea that this is true. Right. And the value of that to me was, well, don't unknowingly resist the truth <laughs> or don't knowingly resist the truth. Sorry, I, I misspoke. Don't knowingly, don't just go, well, I don't like it. Because I can tell you that my experience of life as Steve is, clearly there's a lot of things that I don't like as Steve. A lot of happenings are not accepted. So it's clear to me that misery can only stem from that. No. Whatever. Actually, Steve. I'm going to stop you there because 
your likes and dislikes bring pleasure and pain. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. But the suffering is a result of something else. So what if we if we're using misery in uh, in as synonymous with suffering? Yes, yes, I am. That mm -hmm. that is not actually uh, produced by your likes and dislikes. Okay. It is the secondary involvement in your likes and dislikes that produces right. the suffering. The likes and, and dislikes brings pleasure and pain, and that's just part of life. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's all... It, meaning manif manifestation, is all manifestation and unmanifest are one. There's no second. That's right. Yeah. That is a crucial point. Yeah. Right. So I guess the, the one remaining thing that I'm totally clear that the ego doesn't like <laughs> is that self-realization will not occur on its time schedule. Yes. <laughs> that so if there's if there's any single thing that remains that bothers me because I, I I don't I I can see that even as a pointer the last one you gave which is that uh, likes and dislikes aren't the source of suffering because they're included. Like I think I, I consider that that is something that I can accept with ease. Mm -hmm. The one remaining thing that, that I'm not accepting with ease, I, the doer, is not accepting with ease is, is that self, that realization may not happen at all during this cycle of this body mind organ, organism, and that it's not within the power of this body mind organism as essentially an object a manifest object to exercise control over the unmanifest that's like fuck that's too bad <laughs> so what we're pointing to is the fact that even this apparent object, this manifest object, is not independent in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> so it is integrated. It is deeply connected as a, to use Ramesh's language, it's a happening. The the ob so-called object is truly not an object in any definable way, ultimately, because the, the notion of an object contains within it a certain quality of uh, independence Yes. That is simply not there. So what it really is, is a process. What we are, are this ongoing process or movement of the unmanifest, of God, of sort. And so as... There's, no, there's nowhere to get. There's nowhere to get to. Precisely. And, and the no, ego goes, I got to get somewhere. One, there's no one to get there, is another way to say, it. <laughs> you know, the, that oh, differentiation is purely notional. I mean, it's necessary and very functional, but it's notion. It's an, an idea that we are this. 
But as you look more deeply and you begin to truly see, recognize how what we are is integral, integrated, an aspect of something vastly bigger. That's a that's the game changer. Wow. So <laughs> I just noted that I've been as Steve making having the presupposition that it would be better to be self-realized. Right. For Steve. Right, which is not like that's true. It's just that's a preference too. Yeah, I mean, as we talk about it in, in our language and in our way of perceiving the world, the to for the object not to suffer for this this sense of meanness rather than the object, the sense of meanness, this quality of Steveness. For that to not suffer, we would say is better. I mean, we. <laughs> I totally agree. I mean, that's why I'm here talking to you for sure. I, I totally agree with that. So, I mean, we can, from that standpoint, we we do make evaluations and hierarchies of what we like and don't like, and what we consider to be good and bad, and the not suffering uh, is probably right there at the top of the list at the top of my list so one more thing Certainly. so that other people can uh and, and that is so i don't know if this phrase will make the point but so predeterminism or predestination like i heard ramesh say some things that i understood to mean that the movies made that and so you know i and and so conceptually i could see that if there's a timeline of the movie the viewer of the movie doesn't know what the end of the movie looks like doesn't know necessarily what how the movie was made so the beginning of the movie isn't actually the beginning of the movie because there's something which is source. So that creates some degree of cognitive dissonance. Yeah, perfect. Exactly. I mean, it is definitely cognitively dissonant and 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 the it's dissonant against the consequences of personal responsibility for the body-mind organism. So if I knew that I as the body-mind organism wasn't going to suffer and that I as this body-mind organism wasn't going to cause any others to suffer, which I understand intellectually isn't what occurs anyway, but it sure feels that way. <laughs> so let's go back to the image of the uh, the movie. Or, I mean, he used that one. Uh, sometimes he also used one of a painting that was 50 miles long. And I mean, if you talk for years and years and years, uh, you come up with all kinds of stuff, you know, over the periods to pour it. And some are, in my my view, you know, more effective, sharper pointers than others. Hmm. And some have uh, contained within them some real problem areas, <laughs> intellectual. Right. They raise more Listen, questions than they may answer. It right for people like you and me with minds like ours. But but Ramesh is talking to people at of all different 
uh, stripes, intellectual stripes, uh, uh, philosophical stripes, backgrounds, all, all kinds of different things. And he, he was a master at evaluating people as a bank president. I mean, his, he rose through the ranks to be the president of the Bank of India in large measure because of his capacity with people. So he, he can connect with people and understand where they're coming from quite, quite well. And he would tailor the specific teaching on that day and that moment to that person. Yeah, like and he'd so, say, so your question is... <laughs> well, yeah, that, that was another thing. But <laughs> so a lot of these examples are more suited to someone with a more basic understanding that needs a more simple image. As an image, I mean, as a pointer, there's real difficulties, real problems with the pointer from a uh, philosophical standpoint, because the viewer of the movie, the viewer of the painting, is actually part of the fucking painting. He's not outside the painting viewing the the movie or the painting. <laughs> He's part of it. Right. That's yeah, separateness that is, is implicit in the in the example. And that is where you the problem that you're encountering lies in that implicit separation, which isn't there. Yeah. I mean, I so, read, I mean, forget me. tomorrow yeah. I'll show up to and read that one. Like on this exact point, I mean, I found this, what you're saying described, you know, in terms of, uh, I, I, I'm, it's from your book too. What, you know, you know, it, what enlight you know, what enlightenment isn't <laughs> basically is how I, you know, experienced it was that 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 in order to be separate, what the body mind organism does or something does is it takes a spiritual experience and it cuts it out as a chunk, and it wants. So I think I understood that, and that's the difference between doing consciousness and being consciousness <laughs> yes we can say that. That, that yeah that's how i i thought of it all right so anyway man i'm so glad to have this opportunity thank you for engaging me you're very welcome steve you're welcome anytime thank you <laughs>